Okay then, for our start today's Flycast emulator for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you just get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it also helps out my channel too. So for subscribers out there who's been watching me for some time, you'll know that I release a hell of a lot of content, especially setup guides. And one of these I've not actually covered is a full setup guide is the really awesome Flycast. So Flycast emulator is a multi emulator that emulates Sega Dreamcast, Sega No Me, Sega No Me 2 and also Sammy Atomis Wave. Now the argument could be why bother with Flycast when we got the perfected Redream? Well one of the reasons Flycast is superior in some ways is that Flycast will allow us to add HD custom texture packs to Sega Dreamcast games. I've also covered that as a standalone, as a setup guide. So I'm going to leave the link in my description. So Flycast users, you can actually add HD custom texture packs through using that guide. So anyways, let's get on with this setup guys. We're going to download the latest and greatest Flycast just here. So if we go over to this GitHub page, I'll leave the link for downloading this in my description. We're just going to go to plus eight releases. And as you can see, the latest release was actually back in March 16th. So we're going to go to plus eight releases. And if we just scroll down from here, we're going to download this for Windows. So if we go on to Flycast Win64, I've already downloaded this. What I'm going to do next is actually show you what we need to do to set this up. So once you've downloaded Flycast, we got flycast.zip just here. All you're going to see inside is literally flycast.exe. We're just going to strap that onto the desktop. Now, what I suggest you do when it's actually creating a new folder, because when we open up flycast.exe, it's going to create a couple of files and things can get very messy very quickly with this. So if I right click on the desktop, new folder, and I'm going to just call this one flycast. You can call this whatever you like. If I just drag that exe inside of there, Go into the Flycast folder and we're going to open up flycast.executable. And here we go. Like I was saying, it's just created a file and we've also got a new folder appearing here as well called data. So for now, what we're going to do is just close this down. And what we're going to do, first of all, is go into the data folder. And this is where our BIOS files are going to go. So if I go into my BIOS folder just here, we've got Atomis Way BIOS. If we go in there, all I need to do is just drag awbios.zip into that Flycast data folder. And I've got the Sega Dreamcast BIOS. And this is going to be these two files, which is required. So I'm going to drag in the DC underscore boot dot bin as well as the DC underscore flash dot bin. Just drag and drop both of those into the Flycast data folder. And we've also got Naomi BIOS. So what we've got here is Naomi.zip, Naomi2.zip and Naomi.gd.zip. These are all of the files that you need. So just drag again into the Flycast data folder. Okay, once you've done with that, we're going to just back out of the data folder and we're going to start creating some new folders. So what we're going to do first of all is just create a folder in here called Dreamcast. We're going to create another folder and we're going to call this one a Thomas Wave. And what we're going to do with these folders is link them up as directories once we're inside of Flycast. We're also going to create new me. And we're going to create another folder and a final folder called Naomi2. So what we're going to do then is start adding some games into these new folders. So if I go into Atomis Wave first, uh, I've got some Atomis Wave games here. These are all in .zip. So if I just drag and drop or just copy these into the Flycast Atomis Wave folder. And once they're copied in, we're then going to go to the Dreamcast folder and start adding some Dreamcast games. So into my Dreamcast folder and these are going to accept .chd. Now I've also covered how to convert .bin and .q files to .chd. If you're not aware of this, chd means that you're going to save a lot of space on your hard drive. I'll leave the link in my description for chd man so you can potentially convert your own games into chd. We've also got Naomi. So in my Naomi folder, I've got Naomi games just here. You'll notice that some of these comes with CHDs. 
If we go into CVS2, for example, you'll notice this is a CHD. So if you get a pack of Naomi games, you'll likely need the pack with dot .zips and folders which have got the dot .chds to go with them. So again, I'm going to just copy those into Naomi folder. And finally, we have got Naomi 2. And the same like Naomi 1, we got some .zip folders and we got some accompanying folders just here which should have .chds inside. So we're just going to copy those inside too. Okay, so we're pretty much good to go. If we then open up Flycast for the first time. And here we go. So once you boot up Flycast, you're not going to see any games. We need to start setting directories. So we're going to go to settings. And from settings, we're just going to drop down to where it says content location. And from here, if we go to add, we can then go to desktop, which is where my Flycast folder is with the games. And here's my Flycast folder. And first of all, I'm going to add a Thomas Wave. So if I left click on that one and then just go down to select current directory. And then what I need to do is rescan content. And if I press done, we're then going to find our games are just here for a Thomas Wave. Now we've got a few other systems to add. So if I go back to settings and content location again, I'm going to add another folder. So I'm going to go to up to parent directory and I'm going to just scroll until I find my Flycast folder. Uh, so we're going to add Dreamcast next. And we're going to go to select current directory again. And I'm going to go to add again. And Naomi. And select current directory. And finally, we have got Naomi 2. So Naomi 2 and select current directory. Rescan content. And if we then go up to done, we can now see all of the games are now inside of Flycast. So we got a Thomas Wave here, Sega Dreamcast. Sega Nomi 1 and 2. So first of all, let's just boot up one of these games to see if things are working as they should. So let's just randomly click on this one just here, which is Virtual Fighter 4. Everything appears to be working fine with this one, and I've got an Xbox controller connected. <laughs> So as we can see, Virtual Fighter 4 is working fine. Now I've not had to map out my controller because Flycast is cleverly detected it automatically. Now if you find this isn't the case for you, if we just open up Flycast again, go over to settings, and if we then go to controls, what we're going to do just here is find our controllers just here. So as we can see, system sdl xbox series x controller if i need to map this out what i'm going to do is just go over to map for example if i want to remap the d-pad up button if i go to map and then if i press up on my controller on my d-pad it's then mapped it and that's how you do it so it's pretty simple stuff next thing we need to do is briefly take a look at some video settings now we got lots of different settings just here now you can enable some of these settings things might not look right you could enable things and things could look awesome now whilst i'm here if we take a look at graphics api should your games not boot correctly or you get a black screen it's always worth checking your graphics api by default for me this is selected as direct x 11. i recommend vulcan or opengl if that's the issue you're facing if we also go to internal resolution, providing you've got a decent enough computer, we can actually upscale our game. So if I start increasing this, I'm going to go to times six. And what I'm going to do for now is just go up to done. And if I open up one of my games again with this internal resolution, I'm going to open Dolphin Blue, which is a Thomas Wave game. 
Okay, so if I press select button on my Xbox controller or that odd button with the two squares on it, what I'm going to do is go to settings and from here we can actually start playing around with some video settings on the fly. So for example, if I enable widescreen, I'm also going to make sure that V-Sync is on for all games because enabling V-Sync is going to take away screen tear. I've also upscaled my internal resolution to times 6 as we know. And we also got the ability here to upscale textures. Again, just like internal resolution, if you've got a lower end computer, then by increasing the texture upscaling, your game might likely lag. So just be very modest. I'm gonna go for times three for this. Now, my controller isn't working for this game. Nothing's happening and it's asking me to insert a coin. So what I need to do then is just very briefly map this out. So I'm gonna go back to Xbox Series X controller if I go to map, what I'm going to do is just go down to system buttons and we're going to find coin just here. As we can see, it's not actually mapped out. So I'm going to go to map and I'm going to press one of my buttons and that's then map that out. So if I press done and then go back into the game and done again and resume. As we can see, buttons now working fine. And if you're not familiar with Dolphin Blue, then you can see very clearly absolutely inspired by the Metal Slug series. Finally, we're going to go back into Flycast again. This time, we're going to open up a Sega Dreamcast game. So I'm going to double left click on Giga Wing 2. Okay, now let me just tell you that in order to get a full screen mode, if I press Alt and enter on my keyboard simultaneously, that's going to bring us into full screen mode. As we can see, the bar at the top disappeared. We can also load state and save state like I was saying. So if I just go to save state. And if I press select on my controller again and then go to load state. Okay, and as we can see, some games wasn't designed for this widescreen format, such as this one. So, simply go to settings, and we're going to go to video, and we're going to disable widescreen for this. If we then go to done, and resume... And finally, one suggestion is if we go back to settings and we go to general, I suggest putting cable to VGA. I think this is one of the best video options out there. So if we go to done and resume. And 
that's it then for today's Flycast emulator setup. So in this setup, guys, we've covered the Sega Dreamcast, we've covered Sega Nomi 1 and 2, and also a Thomas Wave. So lots of more further in-depth video settings there to play with. Just make sure you choose your options wisely. And for those out there who want to experiment with Dreamcast HD Texture Custom Packs, check out the link in my description, and some of your Dreamcast games are look amazing. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content. Also, be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.